Pittsburgh Post game live from Highmark Stadium after the Hounds dropped the home opener in 2021 here. 1-0 to that boogeyman team, the Charlotte Independents. Pittsburgh now 0-7-5 against Charlotte. It was a tight one, though. There were plenty of opportunities for the Hounds to try to tie it. They were playing up a man for the final 25-plus minutes. Um, John Krasinski joins me from Pittsburgh Soccer now. I'm Matt Geick. I wanted to break this one down for you. Just got done talking with Bob Lilly and uh, starting keeper Danny Vitiello, who played in front of fans for the first time here at Highmark. More on that later, though. Uh, John, your assessment of a team in the Hounds now 0-2-1, still looking like it's finding itself both in front of its own goal and also in front of the opponent's goal, too. Yeah, there's just, you know, like I, I, you and I have been talking about this throughout the night, that this team just not quite there in terms of their rhythm, in terms of connecting passes between the midfield and the forwards. You know, I think we, we're seeing a lot of decent things individually. We, we can see, the te you know, what why Bob Lilly uh, chose a lot of the players that are on the field right now. That, uh, you know, th there's some dynamic ability among the group, but right now the group is lacking a, a dynamic you know, ability to finish in the final third when it matters most and, and creating those quality opportunities and finishing. Now they, they had their chances tonight, just just couldn't couldn't capitalize at this point. But um, yeah, just really, un, you know, it's a, it's a very unique place for the Riverhounds right now. They're, they're in a place they haven't been in a while. Uh, a slow start to the season. Yeah, they had a slow start to 2019. Mm -hmm. Didn't win a game until their fourth match. But still, two losses, uh, a, a draw against Hartford. One thing Bob Lilly uh, in his press conference today talked about is that he still feels like this team's getting better each week, mm -hmm. which is an interesting takeaway. But, you know, again, just missed opportunities. Just... You know, they're creating turnovers. Uh, you're, you know, it, it, they, they pressured Charlotte's back line into some mistakes and were able to get forward into the final third and create some opportunities, but just no quality chances um, for long stretches. You know, there were a few, as, mm -hmm. you know, as we talked about. You know, at the end of the match, you know, they had that, that, that one last chance with Dequa with a header on the far post and great save by Brandon Miller, but this is a team that it just looks like they're not clicking. I think somebody even mentioned in the press box towards the end of the match is like they were coming, they were getting close in that if they could break through and get that one, they could have even gotten a couple more, but they just, they just couldn't figure it out, you know, and it, and to have the opportunity to be up a man for, you know, a good portion of the, 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 the final stretch of the match and just not be able to capitalize. It has to feel like a lost opportunity. I felt like last week was a lost opportunity for the Hounds to, you know, come away with a one nothing tight, really tough, hard fought one nothing win, but it ends up one one with a late goal to give up. And then tonight, just they can't capitalize. They can't get that, you know, even just get that equalizer tonight after Charlotte really outplayed them in the first half for sure. Emblematic of the night, Jordan Dover, a substitute battling through an injury. He came on as the Hounds were trying to press the attack. Uh, he had an open look at goal from inside the 18, decided to try to cross it. It was almost like a shot slash cross, and he put way too much on it. Dequa couldn't get on the end of it. Um, a golden opportunity that doesn't even end in a shot on target. Uh, the Hounds only had five of those despite having 21 shot attempts yeah. overall. So uh, that tells a, a fuller story on the offensive side. On the bright side, John, fans were back in the house, 2,000 plus here, as Matt Grubba, the director of communications, called it uh, a CDC sellout because that's as many as the Hounds were allowed to fit into the building, which normally holds about 5K. So uh, that was just exhilarating, uh, really, yeah. not, not to mince words, for you and I to be in the press box again for. Uh, for us to see all of our, our, not all of our friends here, but a lot of the usual folks and faces were showing up on the south side. So that part was terrific. Denny Vidiello hadn't played in front of the fans at all. He got to play in front of the Steel Army in the first half. So uh, he was impressed by that. It was a celebration of soccer once again returning here in front of live audiences. <laughs> and, and that's a feeling, just w driving through the parking lot uh, and seeing cars. I mean, last year I drove through the parking lot just to get here and it was just, just to get in up by the stadium. I could, Pretty much have any parking spot um, so nice to see the people uh, the return of every fan that could enter the stadium tonight they got what they got everybody that they could into the stadium so absolutely terrific great night for uh, soccer in pittsburgh and soccer in general you know great night in terms of at least bringing the atmosphere back and 
you know, this team, this, this is a work in progress. So I think there, this is going to take a lot of patience from, uh, for, from Pittsburgh soccer fans and for the Riverhounds fans. Um, but you know, again, it, just just to see the Steel Army, uh, you know, I thought they were in mid-season form yeah. Even better, uh, towards yeah. the end Playoff. of the match, especially, you know, pushing for the uh, the Hounds to score that, that equalizing goal. And they were, you know, clapping in unity, you know, just getting really getting behind the team. And they, they uh, if, if anything gets me excited about being in this venue, it's it's them. It's mm -hmm. it's the supporters. It's the, the diehard fans. So it was really great to see. Yeah, outstanding. The Hounds are looking for, uh, obviously, better results here. They have started slow under the way in the past, but um, every season's a new season. There's plenty of turnover here, as we talked about, plenty of new faces on the back line, plenty up front, too. And uh, the challenge continues because they have two consecutive road matches after this before they return home for two um, later in June. So, you know, Bob's going back to the drawing board. He said he's going to be frustrated looking at some of those missed chances. Uh, but he did say that he, like you mentioned, he thought this was their best 90-minute performance. They had the lead at Hartford late, but gave it up. Um, this one, especially in the second half, I think I like the way that they finished. Even though they were up a man, it was still um, it was still a consistent press from their part, and, and they were knocking at the door all night long. Yeah, they were like I said, they were they were pushing forward. The effort was there. They were creating opportunities to get into the final third and create those opportunities. Um, and then you, you know you mentioned the, the new the new back line and. You know, it was really a letdown there in, on the goal so, to give up to Para. You know, he is the guy that scored last week. Bob mentioned, you know, mentioned it in the press conferences. We've got to be aware. He has to be marked in that situation. Yeah, they, there was a a moment there where maybe a lot of the players thought that this there was a foul call. Mm -hmm. There was a little hesitation, and that hesitation maybe it, it cost them this goal because, you know, again, Para wasn't tightly marked enough. Um, it was a nice play. I mean, it was a nice ball over the top and then a, a short cross that got into the box. But we alluded to in, you know, throughout the evening, the, and Bob brought it up in the, in the press conference, this team does not, in the past, under Bob Lilly, give up hardly any goals off uh, set pieces or headers, things like that. And they've scored, they've given up three goals now on headers in the box. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hounds have been notoriously just really good Stingy. at yeah. just to preventing teams from getting shot opportunities inside the 18 so that's 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 something I'm sure that they're, they're gonna want to work on uh, tightening things up a bit and and just building that camaraderie uh, again the back line is still a work in progress I mean they, they just picked up another player Jalen Robinson mm -hmm. uh, assigned him on Friday so we know they're still building this thing uh, the other thing was interesting was the op option to go with four-man back line yeah. versus playing three center backs and having a couple, you know, he's got some versatility there. Preston Kilwin playing out left wide, left back. Um, it's just, it's an interesting setup. I mean, actually, you know, like a lot of natural center backs across the entire back line tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, you know, having Jordan Dover in there for a full 90 minutes and getting him a little bit more involved in getting forward and sending balls in and. And we saw that, that he had, there was some quality there. Obviously, he had that one where he made the decision. I, I'm sitting there from my angle, I'm telling him, shoot, or get into the box yeah. and shoot. You know, Dequa gets the ball to his back, turns, and he sees uh, Dover breaking. Dover gets into the box. It's a little bit of a tough angle, but I think if we've seen him make that shot before. Sure. So, you know, I'm sure he might, maybe he's going to look at the film and second guess himself on that one, but. You know, it, it's early in the season. I'd like to see what this team's going to look like at mid-season when all these guys and that are maybe not quite connecting and making those runs. That you know, how many times have we do we see them try to send a you know that that quick short ball through behind a defender and it just doesn't quite connect. A lot tonight. A yeah. lot, especially in the first half. Yeah. Yeah, and that's 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 the thing that I. This is it's going to take time. It's going to take time for this for that to hopefully click and, and they can get all in the same